the time to uh, deliver a talk to my own uh, the group and students uh, in the in Montreal, and uh, finally I found that the uh, Luca probably the best person to to come come forward to deliver this talk rather than myself, and because the uh, he has a uh, you know the very important credential to to talk about this issue and uh, to share the experience. Uh, his own experience, his own uh, wisdom and visions with all of us here. So I think I'm sure that the student will learn and also not only students, but also researchers, professors in the audience will be able to learn from, from his talk. And I'm, I'm sure that the, uh, well, I'm sure will be enjoy his talk because I listened before. So that's why. Uh, so I, uh, uh, and also I want to thank Tarek for this, uh, you know, for, for spearheading this effort. And thanks all the organizers uh, from the IGB sections, uh, you know, MTTS chapters, uh, student branch chapter at the Grupo Polytechnic, and uh, the of course we have Saida, okay, Tarik, Saida, uh, Joseph, and uh, many others. Uh, then the uh, uh, and also want, uh, I want to thank the uh, you know the Polygon Research Center, and of course the Starcom. Uh, for for the for their collaborations and uh, so I hope you all of you enjoy will enjoy these presentations as I did before. Um, I'm sure you will continue. I will enjoy it again so this time. And uh, so the let's welcome uh, Luca Professor Peregrini for for this talk. Okay, let's uh, let's welcome him. Okay. Thank you very much, uh, both of you, Professor Giraffe and Professor Kevu, because uh, I really appreciate your invitation to give this talk and I'm happy to, to deliver it because uh, it took to me some years of hard work to learn on how to not only write a paper but also manage the paper during the review process. Let me share my screen and we can start I think. Okay. I hope, you see, I hope you see my screen full size, correct? Yeah, perfect. Thanks. Okay, perfect. Okay, thank you very much for, to everyone and uh, I'm here to talk to you on how to write a technical paper, sharing my experience on, uh, on the editorial stuff and uh, get it published is not uh, guaranteed. You can uh, follow this instruction and maybe you get it published. I believe that this is a, a good receipt at the end of the day. Uh, first of all, let me tell you something about my experience because uh, this is the reason why I, I was invited uh, to give this talk in, in, uh, in many occasions because of my experience on the editorial side that uh, let's say finished with the, uh, the editor-in-chief uh, position for three years for the transaction of migratory techniques. But before that, uh, I have been associate editor in several journals, uh, guest editor, and uh, I also uh, worked before that and during this period also as a reviewer, which is, I believe, very important for everyone. And uh, of course, I am also an author, and this is also uh, why I am uh, sharing some. Uh, actually, uh, the first question is uh, why you want to write a paper? And uh, essentially, there are many, many answers to this question. Of course, we are scientists, and therefore the idea, the main idea is that we want to publish, to spread our knowledge and uh, our findings uh, so that other researchers can uh, use our results or confirm their, because the, the result, because this is also uh, very important, and also extend our result. That means we want other people working on the same topic to do what we cannot do alone, and therefore we want other people working to create collaboration, to extend and intensify the work on this topic. And uh, sometimes you want to publish to clarify some concept. Maybe there is a concept which is not uh, fully understood or uh, difficult to understand. And then for you want to help colleagues to better understand. And therefore you publish a paper with a better explanation of some uh, uh, theoretical uh, part, for instance. Uh, definitely you want to establish priority because you are doing a job, uh, you want people recognize you as the first one who started some job and therefore some activity and therefore you, uh, of course, gain reputation and this is very important, especially for uh, academic uh, people, but not only for academic, also for industry people. Uh, you want also to tell 
the world that uh, you can do something and therefore maybe some companies interested to come to you and uh, offer to you a contract for uh, doing some job to some work together this is also very important uh, to get more money for your results and to help uh, industries in the in the like, what what is called the uh, industrial transfer and the knowledge transfer and of course especially for academic people like um, is my case uh, uh, it is very important for career advancement because uh, in worldwide, more or less, uh, the uh, the career advancement in the in the university is based on the publication. Not only on that, but uh, the record of publication is very important for uh, your career. Therefore, these are the reasons behind uh, writing a paper. But then, what do you need to write a good paper? This is the the key question. And one possible answer is that you need a problem and a good idea to solve the problem. This is uh, maybe enough for writing a paper. And then let me give you an example. Let's think about a very, very important uh, uh, problem for humanity, which is uh, how to make an extending, because uh, this is a very critical problem. And then you think a lot about this, uh, you come up with an idea, and then the, your idea is very simple. Just break a bit the, the egg and this is standing. And you are very happy because you found a very nice solution, simple solution for this problem. But you then discover that this has been proposed six centuries ago, more or less. And therefore you are desperate because you cannot tell people I am doing something that has been already done. Therefore, this is not an appropriate solution. You cannot write a paper on this. Then you say, okay, you realize that you need something more technological, more new, and therefore you try with another solution, which is this one. Very nice, very simple, very elegant, but still technologically advanced with respect to the previous one, because you don't have to break the, the eggs, for instance. And then you are again happy because you find the solution, but you go to the shop just close to your house and you find exactly the same uh, object and you can buy it on the market. Therefore, again, you cannot publish it. You are still desperate because you cannot publish. Therefore, the proper answer is not this one, but I believe is another one, which is slightly different, which is you need an open problem. That means a problem which is still looking for a solution and a new idea to solve the problem. You can also solve an old problem with a new idea. This is also fine because uh, you are uh, finding something which is uh, a new perspective, a new way to solve the same problem. Therefore, this is, uh, in my opinion, the answer for this question. And to do that, you have to know, you must know what has been done before, because otherwise you cannot find open problems and new ideas if you don't know what is behind what has been done before. And therefore you need a very careful and comprehensive bibliographic search before starting elaborating your solution because otherwise you run the risk to reinvent the wheel and nobody's interested in a new wheel because it's still there very appropriately working, no problem. Then how can you do this bibliographic search? Actually, I remember and probably some of the colleagues remember like me that it was very heavy in the past because uh, uh, before the internet, we had to go to the library to spend days uh, there to find, uh, to look in these uh, big books uh, and to, uh, let's say, read a lot of paper on, on uh, let's say, hardware paper, and then try to find something that was useful for our problem uh, and, uh, let's say, set the basis for the new solution. Nowadays, apparently, it is more light because we have internet, uh, we can easily connect with our computer, there is IEEE Explorer, which is uh, a huge database with a lot of publications, scientifically speaking, from the engineering point of view. You can also use other like Google Scholar, ResearchGate, uh, maybe Wikipedia, but be, be careful because not always Wikipedia provide very useful uh, and uh, let's say controlled information. But anyway, it seems lighter today because you can just sit in front of your computer and try to find uh, papers. Actually, is it true that it is a lighter. Uh, I made a, a small experiment. I went to IEEE Explorer. I selected one, uh, let's say, very large uh, topic like power amplifier. 
and I restricted my search to the MTT uh, transaction. This was done in 2018. Therefore, it's uh, uh, not covering the last two years, but nothing more or less changed changed in the, in the last two years in terms of uh, uh, the proportion that I want to show you. And actually, what I found is uh, rough, a bit less than 2,000 uh, papers, uh, only journal papers, only on the MTT transaction published on power amplifiers since the very beginning of the publication of this journal. Then I tried to, to do this. I just restricted the, research, the search to the last, uh, actually to the years between uh, 1999 to 2008, therefore 10 years uh, from this, in this period. And I found roughly 470 papers. Again, I did the same for the last 10 years at that time, that was 2009, 2018, and they found 900 plus papers. That means that in the first 36 year of the journal, one quarter of these papers were published. In the following 10 years, another quarter, and in the last 10 years, one half. That means we are producing a lot of new paper every year. And this is, the pro uh, let's say, a problem when you have to make a bibliographic search, because it means that you have so many papers that it's not easy to find the appropriate paper, those that are really relevant for your research, and your topic and those that in fact are not uh, strongly related to it. Therefore, uh, it is not so easy to make this search. It may become easier if the authors do a great job in, uh, uh, let's say, properly classifying their paper, therefore selecting appropriately keywords and title. I will discuss more in detail. Then, what kind of paper do you have to search when you uh, make your bibliographic search? Essentially, you need the, the key papers, those that uh, somehow started this kind of topic. Therefore, just to give you an example, if I look for uh, subsidies integrated with guides, definitely there will be some papers, some, uh, let's say, milestone from uh, Professor Kevu and this group uh, that need to be cited and referenced because he founded this. Uh, topic and uh, he developed a lot, but also he started it and therefore he deserved to be recognized for this. And therefore we need to give credit to this paper. But then we also need papers that are the state of the art, therefore very recent paper that uh, went uh, over the previous results and provides the state of the art development and results. And these need to be referenced and in particular, you need to compare your activity, your work with this paper. Because keep in mind that at the end of the day, when you write a paper, you have to claim and of course demonstrate some advancement over the previous state of the art. Otherwise the paper is not relevant and is not probably republished. Then uh, once you have identified the topic you want to work on, you investigated the state of the art, therefore you made the bibliographic search. Now you are ready. Of course, you have an idea on how to solve some open issue, drawback, limitation, and therefore you can overcome some of these uh, previous problems. Then you are ready to go to the lab and develop. Of course, uh, uh, this is not uh, necessarily in this perfect order, in this very order, because sometimes you have an idea, you go to the lab, do something, then find some paper that uh, allow you to prove and therefore you go back, therefore it's, it's back and forth procedure, but more or less this is what, what you have to do. And once you get results that you believe are, uh, let's say, going over the state of the art, you, you are ready to write your paper, okay? And writing the paper again, you probably go back to the lab because you have to clarify to yourself some open issues and so on. But anyway, you write the paper. Then, before writing the paper, you have to decide what you want to do with this paper, with this work. And essentially, you can decide to send the, 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 the information on your work to a conference or to a journal. This is the first decision you have to make. And typically, the conference is uh, the perfect venue if you want to pre present some preliminary results. The idea is there. It is not fully exploited, but it's interesting. The verification is ongoing. You have some result, but maybe not completely, uh, let's say, confirming your idea, but still they are there. 
and therefore you can start telling the world that you are doing this job and these are the preliminary results you get. This, of course, set priority because you say, I'm working on this topic, I'm the first one, and the typically conferences provide a quicker publication. They are even more open to accept incomplete work because uh, journal typically require a, a, a more complete and uh, full job. Uh, of course, also the conferences uh, sometimes are lighter in terms of review process, uh, not necessarily, but typically you don't have a uh, revision of your article, it's uh, on off, therefore accepted or rejected, but is uh, with no back and forth with the, with the reviewers, and this is maybe nice at the beginning. And of course, presenting at the conference allow you to go to the conference to present your paper, maybe not today because of the COVID, but we hope to be back to the conference in person uh, uh, as soon as possible because networking is very relevant for your activity because you can meet peers you can discuss they can provide you suggestions and ideas you can create network between uh, research group and therefore improve your activity therefore conferences are very interesting and important for this and last but not least they allow you to to travel around the world to visit very interesting uh, places to understand better about other uh, other countries and other population and therefore I believe it's very very useful for a human being to travel at the end of the day. Okay, this is in case the, 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 the your work is not yet completely mature, but if the work is mature, therefore you fully develop the theory, the technology or the technique you wanted to propose, the verification was successful, you proved what you claimed, what you had in mind, uh, you can write a journal paper, which requires more time to be written because it's typically more demanding in terms of time of uh, even longer, is a longer paper typically because conferences are usually limited to let's say two pages, three pages, four pages, while a journal paper is uh, in fact, uh, usually something like 10 pages or even more. Therefore, there is more content, uh, more information, which is also a positive uh, thing because you can, of course, uh, be more clear, go more in detail, and therefore explain much better what you did. Uh, the review process, it, in general, is tougher. Therefore, it requires maybe some further revision, subsequent revision of your paper. Therefore, it goes to the to the editor, the reviewer, then it come back with some requests, some uh, issues, and then you have to solve these issues, go back and so on. I will discuss later on this. Uh, definitely, the journal paper is more authoritative because uh, uh, I myself, but I believe everyone, if you want to really find something that is uh, long-standing research with, uh, uh, let's say, uh, good result, a very deep discussion of the problem, you go to see some journal paper. Conference paper are useful if they are last minute communication where you see, okay, these people is working on this idea. This is an interesting idea. Maybe I can do something. But uh, uh, if you want really to understand the, the whole uh, work, you have to go to a journal paper. And therefore, this is the reason why everybody wants to publish a journal paper. Last but not least, many university practically don't consider uh, any any conference paper as relevant, but just the journal paper. And this is another reason to write the journal paper, of course. Now, you have to select the journal, of course, to publish the paper. And this is very important. You have to select the journal on the basis of some criteria, of course. One of the criteria is, uh, for sure, you want to reach the appropriate audience. If I'm writing a paper on uh, uh, Software Integrated Work Guide, I will not publish this on a medical journal, for sure, because there is no reason, no way. I am, of course, exaggerating, but uh, this is uh, uh, reaching out the appropriate community, the appropriate audience is very, very important because uh, this means that uh, the paper is interesting for the journal, the journal is keen, the editor, of course, of the journal is keen to accept your paper because uh, uh, the topic is wise for the journal. Of course, you typically look for international coverage of the journal. Therefore, you look at the journals that are international journals and that they are spread worldwide. Of course, also the previous publication from your group or from yourself are very important because if your professor suggests to submit the paper to a certain journal because he knows that the journal is uh, 
uh, the upper page one, or because it belongs to this community and is recognized in the community, therefore we believe that the, 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 the venue is the, the, the more appropriate, probably will follow. And therefore this is uh, uh, typically also driving the selection. Definitely the reputation of the journal is important, the prestige of the journal, which is typically set by the ranking, the impact factor, or I would say in some cases also by the reputation itself. I mean, we all in our community know that the transaction of micro technique is the best journal to publish a micro paper. No way. And therefore, also independently on the ranking that he can have or the, the impact factor, we believe this. And we, of course, as editors, do our best to improve the ranking and the, and the prestige. But everybody in our community, I, I, be, I am sure, believe that this is the target paper, the target journal for, for uh, microwave paper. And of course, also the editorial standard is important. If you trust the editorial process, the review process, this is a very, very nice because uh, you submit the paper and you are keen to accept the decision, either accept or reject, you are prepared to accept, the, to, to accept this decision because you believe the editorial standard. If you don't believe it, uh, you are keen then to, to uh, let's say, probably uh, to complain with the editor or uh, this kind of thing. Uh, of course, the publication speed is, is important, although I think it's not the, 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 it should not be a very driving factor, but especially for students, I understand it, which is important. For myself, for other, let's say, uh, people that are already somehow known in the, in the community, even if you wait one or two months more for a publication is not a big problem, but for a student, it may be a problem. Therefore, publication speed, and typically this is reported in the journal website. Uh, you have some information about the speed of the publication, the, the average, of course, because you can, nobody can guarantee that your paper will definitely respect this, uh, this uh, speed. Another point is the, the, the paper, the journal publish open access or not, because you may want to open, uh, to have your paper open access because this uh, uh, reach out a larger audience and therefore you get more citation and uh, your paper is read uh, uh, more widely. This is another possibility. And also there are many other that you can add to this, to this list, which are your uh, criteria, selection criteria for the journal. Okay. Keep in mind that uh, wrong decision in the, in the selection of the journal may lead to a failure to publish because of off topic for the journal or other uh, problem. And this is a time, a time loss. And especially if you want to publish fast, the, the, you cannot tolerate this uh, law. Therefore, please be careful in selecting the appropriate journal. In fact, the choice is not so difficult because if you look at your bibliographic search and your reference list and you see that, let's say, 50% or 60% of the, the, the references are from one journal, more likely that's the journal, the, the, the appropriate journal because it means that this topic is widely treated in this journal. Okay, now, once you selected the paper, keep in mind, sorry, the journal, keep in mind that any journal has its own template and also the conference have different template. I give you the example of IEEE. For IEEE transaction, almost all the transactions follow exactly the same a template, which is nice, uh, well assessed since many, many years, uh, were very well defined. If you go to the website of the journal, you can download the template uh, in Word, in LaTeX, uh, and uh, you have a lot of information within this template. You can read and uh, understand how to write the paper from a typographical point of view, what is admitted, what is suggested, and so on. And this is very useful to follow because otherwise you run the risk that your paper is send back to you to change the format because it's not the appropriate one. And this is a loss of time again. And therefore it's preferable to start from the beginning with the appropriate template. Then you are ready to write the paper. The organization of the paper is almost the same for all journals. I don't see any particular difference uh, apart from teeny details. And typically you have title, author list, after keyword, introduction, the technical content, which is the core of your work, some conclusion and the list of references. This is 
the same for any journal, uh, maybe with some small changes. Then let's go through quite quickly to all this, uh, uh, this point. The title. The title is very, very important. Keep in mind that uh, you have a lot of competitors. If you publish on a certain topic, there are many other people that publish on the same topic. Therefore, if you want that someone look at your paper and uh, read your paper and probably possibly reference your paper, you need to make it attractive. And therefore, you have to provide in the title a nice description of what is behind the paper. Of course, the title is short. It's just one, two rows, typically, maximum three. And therefore, you have to play with the words to put the appropriate words that highlight what is within the paper. It has to be somehow catchy from, uh, 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 of course, in a scientific way, you are not advertising, but you are somehow you are advertising your work. And of course, not always it is possible, but try to be catchy in the title because, uh, uh, let's say, a uh, uh, fancy title may attract someone that look inside the paper. And it has to be precise. What I said before, it has to be uh, precise in order to the reader to find exactly what he wants to find, so what he's looking for, because you have a lot of competitors. Remember the power amplifier, 900 competitors in three years, in 10 years. It means that uh, people look at the title and if the title is just not enough close to the, what they are doing, they discard it. No way, they don't read even any, any uh, uh, further, let's say, word on your paper. Just an example, here is a title, an improved microwave filter. Of course, you design a filter on the micro using micro technology, micro sieve technology, and uh, you believe it's improved with respect to, to the previous filter. Okay, this is like having a, a, a shop and say we sell fruit and vegetables, okay? No difference between your shop and any other shop that sell this kind of fruit and vegetables. Therefore, this is quite poor. This is preferable. A novel, low pass, step impedance, micro strip filter with improved out of band response. You are giving much more information. What is the, the, the technology, of course, but also what is the architecture, step impedance. It is a low pass filter. And then you improve the out of band response. You gave a lot of information. It is like saying we sell fresh lemon, apples, healthy potatoes, and fenders. It's much more clear. Look at these two pictures. This is clear what is in your shop and what you are selling, while on the top is not so clear. Okay. Therefore, and this is important because people use keywords and look at the title to eventually read your paper. Okay. What about the authors? This is very important because this has also some ethical, uh, uh, let's say, uh, involvement. Actually, I triple is quite strict. According to the uh, IEEE rules, the author has to fulfill these three uh, items. They have to have uh, made a significant contribution to the, uh, to the work. That means either theoretical, experimental, just analysis and interpretation, and writing the paper in the appropriate way. And this is very important that he's there. Then he has to contribute to write the paper or at least revise the, the article while you are writing it. And it, any author must approve the final version of your paper. Otherwise, uh, he can always claim that he didn't approve the paper. Therefore, if someone uh, did these uh, three contributions, he's an author. Otherwise, you have to just acknowledge this person, but not report him or her in the uh, author's list. And keep in mind that uh, omitting an author or including a person which is not an author in the sense of these three uh, uh, balance here is somehow against the publication ethics, at least for the IEEE. Okay, therefore this may uh, create some problem to you if someone writes the end and say, oh, come on, I didn't work on this paper, I'm not an author, or I, I had never, I never had the, po the possibility to read the final version or something. Therefore, be very careful in formal ways, all the people involved since the very beginning uh, uh, 
think about uh, who was involved in, uh, in doing the job and who needs to be in the auto list. Okay, the abstract. The abstract is extremely important in a, in a scientific paper for essentially one reason. All the paper, all the journals uh, put the abstract open to any uh, people that visit the website. While the paper may be, uh, let's say you can download the paper only if you subscribe or your uh, institution subscribe to this journal, the abstract is typically open. Therefore, you can see the abstract without any problem. And therefore, people who are looking for some information that may help for their work, look at your abstract. If the abstract is complete, is clear, and is in line with what he's doing, he will probably download the paper and read the paper. Otherwise, he will stop there and look at another paper. Therefore, in the asset, you have to overview what you, what you are doing, what are the, the starting, what is the starting point, what is your proposed idea, and what are the, the results that you get, and therefore the claim that you are going uh, beyond the state of the art. Uh, it is at the beginning of the, the journal, and okay, this is normal. I don't go through this. Uh, these are technicalities that uh, I don't care too much. You can read them, but. Uh, uh, is not so important. The important thing is that the abstract is the presentation of your paper and everybody can read your abstract. Therefore, typically short, 10, 15 rows, you have to condense in this very short uh, few sentences uh, the core of your paper, what you are doing and why you are doing and what you get as a result. This is very important. Keywords. Again, another important stuff because keyword that you are used to search when you do the bibliographic search, you put the keyword in the in the browser to find the paper. Therefore, using the appropriate keyword, not too many because typically they are limited to five, six keywords. Uh, it's very important. Try to avoid to invent a new acronym or strange thing in the in the keyword. Try to use standard keyword. Maybe some journal proposed a list of keywords. Try to select in the list because it means that these are the more uh, typically uh, look at that uh, keyword. Uh, if you invent a new totally new acronym and nobody knows, you are you are failing because uh, nobody will never search for this acronym unless the acronym become popular and then you can use it. Another example based on the Sub-Integrated Web Guide. At the very beginning, uh, nobody used, uh, let's say, so widely SIW as an acronym. Nowadays, everybody knows because from every, let's say, many, many years of publication, put this acronym as a standard, like saying uh, finite element method FEM is exactly the same nowadays. But it took some time to get the, this acronym widely spread. And at the very beginning, nobody was looking for this acronym. Nowadays, yes, it's, it's, it's the normal uh, stuff. OK, introduction. This is uh, a sort of overview. It's uh, more somehow uh, for the author, not for the author, but for the reader, this one, because you have to provide the reader with the, the idea that you follow with a certain path to reach your idea, your, your proposed idea. Therefore, you start from the historical overview, maybe very quickly. Historical doesn't mean that you have to say in the year, this one, it was proposed this, but you have to say, this is a problem that has been addressed in the past year and there in this paper and therefore references. And this, still there are these open issues and we propose to solve these open issues in this way. This is the introduction more or less. And this is very nice. Uh, for the reader, because it can, uh, he or she can understand what uh, you, what we will find within the paper. Okay. Then, of course, the technical content. Technical content is up to you. Typically, this is split in several sections because, uh, let's say, if you have a 10 pages paper, the technical content is typically eight pages over 10 because there is a, an introduction, which is typically one page, some references, maybe one page, but the rest is uh, uh, technical content. And typically you have to explain the methodology, therefore what you do and how you do it, very in detail, and then the results that confirm your methodology. Then you can decide to split in different sections if you want, maybe methodology in two parts or if needed, but it's up to you. And of course, 
you need to validate your result, at least in our community, not always, because some journal accept also not validated result, but uh, at least in our community, in our journals, it is always mandatory to validate the result. Therefore, you have to compare your result with some other similar results to show that uh, you perform better, you are faster if you, pro if you propose, uh, uh, for instance, a numerical code, or you are more accurate, uh, or anyway, what is your claim must be validated through comparison with other results coming from other papers, from uh, simulation, from whatever you want, but uh, you need to validate. The conclusion of the of the paper is just uh, let's say a wrap up of what you did, how you did it, and what you and uh, some sort of reconfirmation that you uh, let's say achieved the claimed uh, result. This is important, but is uh, let's say in some some journal don't even have the the, the, the conclusion. But this is uh, let's say typically useful for the reader because uh, when you look at the paper for the first time, typically you look at the abstract, look at the conclusion. Uh, have a quick uh, view of the, a quick look at the figures, understand if the, the paper is worth reading or not. Okay, references, I already discussed about this. It's very important uh, that you have a list of references that support your starting point where we were before this work. Uh, also help the reader to understand maybe some step that you don't want to repeat. Therefore you say this can be found in this paper and therefore the author are invited, the readers sorry, are invited to go back to the other paper to understand what you did because you started from a previous result. And uh, uh, of course, uh, uh, don't, uh, don't reference paper that are useless for your work. Just uh, focus on the paper that are relevant for your work. And uh, of course, there is a format that you have to follow. No, no, no problem, but it's, uh, it's always uh, nice to follow this, the, the, the standard that I'm doing. Okay, well, I did a paper, a paper I think that uh, small details matter. This is my experience as an uh, author because I'm quite uh, critical to myself when I write a paper, therefore I go through the paper very careful uh, or the paper of my student. But uh, not only this, uh, when you receive as a reviewer, as an editor or a reviewer, you receive a paper, if you have a look and you see very poorly prepared figures, tables that are not very understandable, and uh, maybe formatting which is inappropriate, you suspect that the same sloppiness, this author had the same sloppiness also in the lab. And therefore you somehow uh, start thinking that maybe the job is not so high level. I'm sorry that to say this because it may be a very, very, uh, breathtaking uh, work, but if it is poorly presented, the suspect of the reviewer and therefore the way he uh, starts reading the paper is this one. I'm sorry, but the, this is uh, very, uh, I believe it's true because uh, I have experience with many colleagues. Uh, I discussed this and everybody think the same. Therefore, try to, to make it uh, as much as, let's say, as uh, uh, appealing as possible and avoid mistake, ask a colleague to read the paper to avoid the uh, spelling mistake, especially if you are not mother tongue, uh, so that it, uh, the feeling of the reviewer is okay, nicely written. It was reading and going through the, the whole paper. Uh, also try to keep as much as, sh as short as possible the sentences. No need to write a long sentence and you can summarize in a in few words. Just an example. These three, words, these three sentences, actually I borrowed them from Professor Bozzi, a colleague of mine. And because this was in a, in a paper written by one of his students and he showed me the initial point, the middle point and the last point and the, the final version of the same sentence. And I can uh, uh, tell you that these three sentences say exactly the same. In terms of uh, technical content, they say exactly the same, but you, uh, reduced from four rows to one single row, which is very short, very effective, and tell what you want to tell, nothing more. Therefore, why you have to use four rows when you can use just one? Okay, therefore, this is typically people 
uh, don't want to read a long, long paper. They prefer to get information in a shorter uh, format. Therefore, the shorter the sentence is, the better for the reader and also for you, of course, because in some cases you have to pay uh, to publish the journal in the journal, and therefore you have to pay uh, depending on the number of pages. Therefore, you can maybe save one page just summarizing a bit some sentences. Uh, another point, uh, I am quite, uh, let's say, strict on this. When I was editor, I was strict because I believe the, the uh, measurement units are part of our language. Our language is the mathematics, the math, essentially, because we write formula. We uh, want to people understand our formulas and the measurement units are important because they, uh, a number without a measurement unit is typically a, a wrong number. And therefore, please follow also this rule. I don't want to go through them, but uh, there are manuals that you can use. This, uh, this from the NIST is very nice, uh, very complete. You can have a look. It's very important for your job, not only for writing paper in general, because there are uh, big losses in terms of money that are reported in the, in the, let's say, in the records because of uh, misunderstanding in the measurement units. Therefore, it's important to use appropriately that. Actually, uh, try to use as much as possible figures and tables to uh, communicate your results because they are the most efficient way to communicate. Uh, of course, if they, they are nice, if they are and effective, they are properly prepared. Therefore, there are some, let's say, technicalities also here. But apart from the technicalities, I will show you just an example of a figure. This is an example of a plot that reports something that you want to put in your paper. If you use this figure as it is, which is the, let's say, automatically generated, the one automatically generated by Excel, it is almost not understandable. This is exactly the same figure, exactly the same data, nothing different, just with after probably one or two minutes of, uh, uh, let's say, maquillage with, with uh, Excel. And you see that it, uh, uh, it appears quite different, but not only it appears quite different, it is fully understandable because you know that there are measured data, interpolation of the measured data, what is the vertical axis, what is the horizontal axis, and therefore you understand what you are looking at, while in the previous version, there is no way to understand. And therefore, this is what uh, I, I intend when I say sloppiness. This is the first attempt, the, the top left is the first attempt, but is very, very poor. The second one takes just a couple of minutes more, and it is much, much better. Okay, now some hints about ethics. Actually, uh, I already discussed about authorship, and uh, it is also repeated here. But uh, there are also other rules that uh, you have to follow when you write a paper. And uh, actually, in general, if you belong to the scientific community, you have to follow these rules. And one of these rules is. Uh, avoid publishing uh, twice the same matter, okay? It may happen that uh, you are pushed for publishing because you need to publish more for uh, your career or for other needs, but you have to try to avoid as much as possible uh, to reuse the same material more than one time because uh, it, it is not forbidden to reuse material because of course, if you are working on a topic, you are let's say, developing the topic. And therefore, you can recall something that you did in the past to show what you have done now and what is uh, and why what you did now is, uh, is better than the previous one. But this is uh, a low edge. But you cannot publish twice the same content, exactly the same content. And also, you have to avoid to submit to two journal or two conference or conference journal the same material. This is also not only ethically forbidden, but uh, uh, when you submit to a journal, you certify that the same material has not been submitted as well. And therefore, you must be very careful because your certification means that you take responsibility of this. And if someone discovered that uh, you submitted in another place, uh, you can be deferred to the ethical committee and the ethical committee may ban you from the journal or even from the society. Okay, therefore, be very careful because this will destroy your reputation. And reputation is the most important thing in our scientific uh, community. Therefore, I believe you have definitely to avoid this kind of behavior. 
And of course, the authorship I already discussed, no need to repeat. Actually, now the paper is ready. You did what you have to do. You wrote the paper, you did your best to prepare the figure, to follow the ethical issue, and you submit the paper to the journal. Now, the review process starts. What is the review process? The review process is, uh, in my opinion, uh, extremely important because the review process is since Galileo, who started uh, with what we call the Galileo method, uh, it's something that everyone, when you submit some uh, uh, paper and therefore your research work, everybody has to be, uh, uh, let's say, uh, put in the condition to repeat your work and therefore to, con uh, to confirm your work. Therefore, the paper needs to be correct. It has to bring some novelty and it has to be significant because if the novelty is on something which is not relevant to anyone, it's not, it's not important. Uh, actually, the peer review process guarantee that what is published in a journal has been approved by the scientific community. Of course, not the whole community, some people, some selected people, but this is important because this improve the, uh, let's say, the, uh, the reputation, the significance of your work. And not only this, but the review process is also important for the author because you get back information from the reviewer, <laughs> maybe critical. And therefore, you can take advantage of this information, these comments, to improve, to further improve your research work. Because uh, keep in mind that the reviewers are the first reader of your paper. Therefore, uh, before the, re the, the reader of the, of the journal, the reviewers read your paper. And the reviewers can tell you, I don't understand this part. If you... Uh, want to really improve your your uh, uh, your work you have to try to follow the reviewers comment to understand what why they put this uh, comment on their uh, list and try to answer this comment this comment it is not nice to fight with the reviewer just saying oh you don't understand nothing uh, this is the best work i uh, have, that has been ever done because this is not the, the proper attitude. If the reviewer that spent time and is a voluntary, uh, voluntary time, because uh, all the reviewers, at least in our community, are volunteer. They commit to review your paper. They spend their time reading your paper and providing comment. Therefore, you have to value this time. And therefore, you have to follow their comment, try to understand if really the paper is not completely understandable, if there is something that you can improve or some more evidence that you can provide and try to follow them. Therefore, don't fight with the reviewer, try to uh, take advantage of their comments. This is my suggestion. Actually, this is the process. Uh, this is the process that we had in place when I was editor in the, in the transaction on Microtherian Technique uh, uh, journal. But uh, I believe it is almost the same for any journal because most of the scientific journal follow something which is, let's say, if not identical, uh, very similar to this one. And you see that I divided in, in, uh, in four uh, blocks uh, and every block is, uh, there is uh, one person or more person in charge, the author, the editor in chief, the associate editor, the reviewer. Each of these uh, players have some responsibility. The responsibility of the author is to, of course, write the paper, submit the paper, revise the paper if needed, and uh, uh, provide the final document for publication, including copyright, transfer, and uh, eventually payment, uh, uh, let's say, in a document for the payment, and so on. But this is the responsibility of the author. The editor in chief has the responsibility to guarantee that the review process is. Uh, uh, let's say is done in the appropriate way, and therefore this is the role of the editor in chief, which has to check from a, let's say formal point of view if you use the appropriate template, if the uh, the paper is formatted in as it should be, the, the figures and so on. This is typically done by an assistant. Then there is a technical press screening that is done by the editor in chief. I typically look at all the paper, I, I try to read, or at least to try to read the part of the paper when I, they came in, 
to understand if the paper are say suited for the journal in terms of uh, uh, topic if they are not uh, let's say uh sloppy in the in the writing therefore it's uh, uh, the paper is readable if the 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 the, the results are validated, this kind of thing. In case they, I found something that was not appropriate, I can, I was used to uh, send back the paper to the author to modify the paper before starting the real uh, review process. Of, of course, the, the editor in chief can also reject up front the paper for some reason, like it detects some plagiarism or the paper is completely off topic and it may suggest some other uh, journal or other technical problem. Then if the technical pre-screening is passed, it goes to the associate editor, which is an expert of this particular field. And the associate editor, again, make another technical pre-screen, which is more, more in depth with respect to the editor in chief. And if either he or she decides that the paper is, uh, is nice and is uh, good for a review process, it selects appropriate reviewers, that means people working on similar topic and send the paper to the reviewers that have the responsibility to provide timely and uh, uh, let's say useful uh, comments. Okay, timely is a request. Of course, not always it is fulfilled by the reviewer because everybody is very busy, but uh, typically you have the associate editor and the editor push the reviewer to get uh, the answer in time. Uh, not always they, they succeed, I would say. But I believe that also in this case, of, of course, velocity is important, but I believe that uh, useful comments are more important than velocity because if the reviewer replay reject without any comment, you as an author are not happy. The editors are not happy because they have to understand why he asked to, re to reject the paper without any evidence that the paper needs to be rejected. And therefore, this is not a good reviewer, even if it is maybe very fast because it replay in one day, no problem. No, 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 no need to have one reviewer that replay in one day saying yes or no. I prefer, let's say 15 days with some appropriate comment is much more important. Then the editor, the associate editor received the comment of the reviewer, typically three reviewers, some cases even more uh, following the IEEE rules, we need at least two reviewers to uh, decide one paper, and therefore minimum is one, is two, but we typically ask it for three or more, and in most cases I think that the mean number of reviewers is around four, probably. Then the associate editor, on the basis of the comments of the reviewer and on his own judgment of the paper, issue a recommendation for the editor-in-chief, the editor in chief, uh, actually, in my case, uh, I was editor together with Professor Jose Carlos Pedro, and we both uh, went through the paper again, looking at the paper itself, the recommendation of the associate and the reviewers, and try to figure out if this issue, the, let's say, the, is, this recommendation was the more appropriate. And I can tell you 99.9% .9 it was. And therefore, we just added eventually some further comment, in some cases, more technical comment, let's say technical mean uh, typographical comment or something similar. And then we send out the, the decision, which can be rejected if the paper is uh, believed to be inappropriate for all the, uh, more or less all the reviewer, or there are some reviewers that uh, write very strong comment against the paper. Uh, it can be accepted directly if the paper is believed to be uh, ready for publication. But I can tell you, in probably 99% of the cases, the, the, the first decision is revise the paper, modify the paper to, uh, uh, let's say, to give uh, an answer to the reviewer and to give the, uh, uh, to modify the paper and make it more understandable, more readable, more appropriate for the journal. And then the paper come back. And uh, typically the, uh, the procedure is repeated, but in some cases you can shorten because for the paper that are revised, in some cases, just the associate editor have a look at the answer to the question. And if uh, the associate editor is uh, uh, happy with the response, typically there is no need to send back to the reviewers and this shorten a bit uh, the process. And then 
if the pattern is accepted, of course, you are uh, lucky and happy, and therefore uh, you can celebrate. Uh, of course, these are some suggestions to prepare the revised manuscript in case the paper is not accepted uh, immediately. And uh, typically, you are required to submit, but it, this is my suggestion, even if you are not required, please send a document where you replay point by point to all the comments of the reviewers, because this is uh, this make easier for the associate editor and eventually the reviewer to check what you did and why you did something or you maybe refused to do something because you don't have necessarily to do what whatever they ask for you have to if, if you believe strongly that one comment is not appropriate you can say to the reviewer this is not appropriate because of this and that and therefore i didn't modify the paper because i believe the paper is uh, already correct and this is uh, it's possible no way it's, uh, it's up to you and in most cases, the reviewer, if you give evidence that you are correct, you are right, the reviewer is keen to accept your comment, your, your reply. Uh, again, keep in mind that the reviewer are the first reader. Therefore, if they say something is not clear, more likely it is not clear. And therefore, you have to modify the paper, maybe change some sentences, try to expand the description in order to make it more understandable. And uh, uh, of course, modify the paper, not only replay to the reviewer, but add some information and modify the paper in order to make it more clear and more uh, comprehensive. Uh, once the paper is accepted, you are typically required to submit some document, uh, the final version, maybe the original, the Word file or the LaTeX file uh, to sign the copyright form and so on. And then you are, let's say, uh, the, the process, uh, the production process can start. The production process means that uh, I, at least I triple, I triple level. They make some changes for matting to put the paper in the in the exact format of the of the journal. They modify maybe slightly the dimension of the of the figure. They put the figure in the appropriate position and so on. But then they send to you the proofs, and this is very important because you receive the proof. There is one corresponding eight author that is in charge to receive the proof. You have to distribute the proof to your colleagues and you have to read the proof because, or at least have a look very carefully because once you approve the proof, there is no way to change the published paper because you approve it and that's it. This is the final version and this is what is published. If you discover later one error or once or something which uh, needs to be changed you have to submit a comment to the journal where you say this is wrong uh, and uh, this has to be changed in this way therefore please uh, be careful read the proof check the proof distribute the proof to the author to the other authors and collect from them any possible uh, change that they want to make uh, because otherwise this is the last possibility and then of course once you approve the proof you have just to sit wait for the publication and celebrate nothing else. but unfortunately it may happen that your paper is rejected and this i can tell you in the uh, transaction on uh, magnetic technique uh, it happens something like uh, two times over three because the rejection rate is roughly 60 percent 65 percent that means one paper over three is accepted and the other two are rejected then what to do with the rejected paper Actually, uh, IEEE allows, as a policy, allows the resubmission of rejected paper. This is not impossible to resubmit a rejected paper. But there are some problems because if the manuscript is rejected for technical reasons, that means it was considered too, too far to be accepted. And therefore, it means that you have to do a, a lot of work to modify your paper, to modify your research, and uh, provide uh, a more improved paper. In this case, you can submit again. Of course, not the day after, but maybe in two, three, four months after doing some job, you can resubmit the paper. You have to tell the editor that you are resubmitting the paper. Don't cheat on this because uh, the, the editor has the tool that can immediately spot the fact that you submitted the paper on the same topic before and therefore if uh, he or she discovered that you submitted and you don't tell openly more likely the paper will be rejected okay 
that you can resubmit, telling the editor that you are resubmitting the paper after modification. You have to show what are the modifications, like in the case of revised paper, and the editor in chief can judge the paper. And if uh, uh, the editor in chief believes the paper is not modified enough, he can reject up front. Otherwise, the paper can go on and have another further uh, review uh, step. The problem arises when the paper is rejected for uh, not for technical reason, that means something that you can fix, but for lack of novelty. Lack of novelty means the people that look at into your paper believe that uh, what you propose is uh, already done, your solution is not new, your solution is not performing better than others, and therefore there is no novelty, no need to publish. In this case, there is nothing that you can do but uh, reorienting your research, try to find another topic or the same topic, but having looking more carefully to the, to the, 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 the references in order to uh, completely understand what has been done before, because this means that you probably missed some reference, some relevant ref reference that reported already what you was doing. And this is the first point that I pointed out at the beginning of this presentation making a very nice and comprehensive uh, bibliographic search avoid reinventing the wheel because reinventing the wheel means you cannot publish okay and this is the problem therefore this is uh, the suggestion in case of rejected paper because of lack of novelty try to understand what really was done and why your paper is not new and try to build on top of what is the state of the art not starting to, be, to, to match back and therefore using some results that are outdated now, okay? Okay, this somehow brings me to the end of the presentation and I have just one, some messages to leave to you before leaving and before uh, answering your question, if any. Uh, this is somehow my personal view of the review process and uh, when uh, I was appointed as editor, I was convinced that this is uh, the right way to go and uh, I believe also after three years of editorship with a limited, I would say very limited number of complaints, probably I succeeded in doing what was uh, uh, the aim at the beginning. Uh, because I believe that the review process is not a matter of accepting, rejecting paper. It's not just for selecting paper. The review process is much more. This is a fundamental contribution that the whole community give to the author to elevate the quality of their research. And therefore, if you seriously, actually, if the review process is uh, conducted properly, that means uh, uh, the reviewer provides uh, useful comments, the editor are not biased, and so on. And of course, it has to be correctly perceived by the author. That means you don't have to say, oh, this, uh, uh, this comment are bullshit and the reviewers don't understand nothing because I'm the best. Of course, if you are more uh, humble and you accept the comments and you try to understand why the reviewer writes at this comment, for sure this will help you improve your paper and your research in general. And one day of the or the other, making it worth publishing in a high level journal. Therefore, this is what I try to do. And I don't know if I succeeded, but I am quite, uh, let's say, happy of the fact that uh, very few authors complained for the review process and most of them were happy with the, how we conducted the review process. And I can tell you, I was very happy to receive also some, uh, let's say, very nice emails from authors that get the paper rejected saying, I'm sorry, of course, that the paper was rejected, but I'm very happy and very grateful for the comments that I received because I'm sure they will help. And this is the best reward for people involved in the review process. Therefore, my suggestion is uh, uh, not, not only follow this, uh, uh, let's say, uh, suggestion, but uh, uh, do your best to do a high level research because if, if you have a very, very nice research uh, result, uh, your paper will be published, no way. And also, uh, if invited, volunteer for the, uh, for the review process because I believe you can learn a lot reviewing the paper of other people because you understand what 
it means to review a paper to judge the paper of other people and this will help you when you rewrite your paper and also you give back to the community because in this way you spend part of your time giving some suggestion to other people that maybe have less experience than you and they can grow in our community and we need people that uh, stay in our community come into our community especially young people and that's it for my side thank you very much for your attention and i'm open for any questions if i can answer thank you a lot professor Peregrini. thank you for uh, sharing your outstanding experience and sharing with you uh, your uh, as a experience uh, i think um, is the time of question please uh, you have two choices raise your hand or uh, send me uh, the question and I will read it. We start with the question of Paolo. How to compare the result if there is no other published work that is uh, in, the, in the same context or scenario or requirement? And furthermore, if sometimes it is if it is not possible to compare the result because the few existing similar approach the, don't show any code or sufficient technical details or I think it's almost the same question. Yeah, that is a very what good you can do. <laughs> <laughs> because uh, it may happen. Of course, there are also uh, what we call speculative papers that are, uh, I believe, very important. And uh, probably uh, the, the idea of uh, uh, verifying the result is uh, somehow too strict in some cases. Because uh, I have in mind one paper, the paper from Veselago about uh, metamaterials. Actually, he proposed a completely theoretical paper, a what if paper, many, many years, uh, decades ago. And uh, it was just a speculative paper. What happened if uh, we can have uh, a negative epsilon or mu material, which was not the case, of course, because they are not real. But then, after 20 years, actually 30 or 40 years, someone started thinking how to generate this kind of material. And nowadays we have metamaterial. And th therefore these are very, very important pe uh, papers because they, let's say, start a completely new uh, topic. Of course, this is uh, very difficult because in some cases you can say to the editor, I cannot check my theory because the theory is completely new. It's somehow uh, completely, uh, let's say, uh, inexistent in, in, in the previous presentation. I can tell you one thing. You can probably always try to check your theory, at least confirm in a maybe uh, under certain limiting hypothesis, uh, you can somehow find your theory matching the old theory, the previous theory. And this may help, of course, because if you demonstrate that uh, removing some uh, particular hypothesis, you can uh, uh, fall fall into uh, an existing theory. You can demonstrate that the two are uh, give the same result. This is a one possibility. But of course, you can also send the speculative, totally speculative paper. Typically, this is done in the physics uh, realm. This is quite normal. In some cases, they just send a new idea, and the idea is published, and everybody starts discussing about this idea. Maybe it's uh, wrong. Okay. After 10 years, it will be demonstrated that it's completely wrong. Just think about the, the new th physical theories about uh, unification of forces. They propose a string, they propose a lot of different stuff. And nowadays we know that some of them, uh, this theory failed, some other are probably uh, promising and nothing new. Actually, we are engineers. And therefore, in our journal, typically we publish something that is, uh, let's say, feasible, okay? Yeah. Therefore, typically the speculation is mostly on the physical side, while the, uh, what we do is typically can, typically can be proved or at least partly proved with some experiment or numerical simulation. Therefore, try to do your best to at least uh, uh, validate part of your theory, if not the whole theory. And this may for sure help uh, uh, the editors and the reviewer to understand and maybe to approve your paper because otherwise uh, uh, it is very critical. A completely speculative paper in, in this journal is very hard to be published. This is for sure because uh, and I, I'm not saying that this is good. Maybe this is bad, but uh, it is up to the editor to be enough open mind to leave your paper to be published. And of course, if uh, you don't have any evidence, the theory may be a bit, uh, 
let's say, uh, too innovative, I would say, maybe the, 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 the editor is not keen to publish the paper. Therefore, try to do your best, but I understand that in some cases, it is not possible or not completely possible to validate the theory. Great, thank you. Uh, another question from uh, Shiran. Most of the time when the people are working in company, uh, this, the company don't allow the way to publish. And we, uh, I add this another point. Sometimes we have this, uh, we sign some document like NDA no, for the no divulgation. In this case, uh, we can't publish only the performance of the design structure, right? And then did I, what's the, I think it's a question to have trade-off. What, what do you think about this, uh, yeah. this trade-off? Yeah, exactly. exactly, I have the same, I had the same problem in the past because I'm used to work with companies. And uh, of course we try to push for publishing. The companies don't want to uh, uncover too much. And therefore it's always a matter of, uh, let's say trade-off as, as uh, professor, uh, what you say, uh, you have to try to provide, let's say, enough information. You can always say, I cannot, uh, let's say, uh, show you all the results or provide all the details. This is even possible. It depends on the on what you are proposing, because if what you are proposing, let's say, a new technology, more likely you don't need to this to the to let's say to show too much, because uh, in terms of uh, theoretical result or uh, or. Uh, uh, details, teeny details, because uh, what you want to show to the world is that you are developing this theory, this technology, and someone can use it. If you want to come to you, you can you can use this technology for anymore. Uh, this is okay. A matter of trade-off. You have to try to do your best to provide, let's say, enough information to convince the reviewer that the paper is worth publishing because there is an advancement, and then. Uh, people can try on their own to uh, find the, the, the missed point or to redesign what you propose in order to, uh, let's say, to get uh, similar results. Of course, the, the, the best is always to provide all the information, but I understand that uh, it's impossible, especially if you work uh, with companies. Actually, you have also to try to, uh, let's say, manage with the companies when you have a contract uh, at university or and to try to understand what are the limits. Because I had, uh, let's say, contact with companies, but at the very beginning, we clarified that some part of the work could be published and some other not. And I never tried to publish what was since the very beginning said that this is not publishable. And they have very nice work that are there and not published and nobody knows, but I cannot publish because they are covered by the, 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 uh, the, the secret of the company. And this is okay, fine, because I got the money. And this is what helped me to have actually the money helped me to have PhD student that did other research and they published other work. Right. This was fine. Yeah, I see here the question about, about Archivix. Archivix. Yeah. Archivix. Yeah. Actually, this is very clear. There is a, a, a rule from IEEE that say that you can post the work on archive even during the review phase. You can post it. But you have to put the information that the paper is under review in the IEEE transaction. And then you can publish after uh, acceptance, you can publish not the version that is uh, given on IEEE store, okay, the, the official one. You can publish your version before uh, publication. Therefore, your final version you can post. This is the rule. But you can, if you look, uh, you put uh, IEEE and archive rule, you can find immediately one page where everything is properly described and you can just follow the rule. Great. Uh, next question, Martin. Yeah, I see the question about uh, uh, <laughs> the, the, the head of the lab uh, as co-author. Actually, this is, I would say, uh, the head of the, of, the, of the lab typically somehow drive the research in the lab. This is my, my opinion. I think it's uh, the same everywhere. And when we say that the, the author have to give a, a contribution, even the idea is a, a, actually probably the most important contribution. If uh, I give someone a, a fellowship for, uh, for, uh, the, uh, for the PSD and I propose one topic, and then of course uh, I have some contact during the, the the work, but maybe the work is developed by the PhD student. 
of course, is using the lab, is using the idea that I proposed, and that's why I believe in that case, the, uh, the head of the lab is a, an author, because in most cases, I believe the head of the, the lab also look at the paper before delivering the paper to the journal, because this should be the case, because I don't see any possibility for the student to submit without any supervision of the of the tutor at least of the of the PhD and therefore it seems to me that uh, of course this is uh, uh, normal to have the, the the head of the lady as, a, as an, uh, an author of course if you are doing something which is outside the lab let's say not using the resources and uh, completely uh, your own idea this is probably another completely different uh, uh, discussion but uh, if your development is within the lab uh, using the facilities and uh, of course taking advantage of the know-how of the lab which has been generated by the, the head of the lab it's quite normal to have the, the head as, as, as an author uh, but of course the, also the other com the, the other people here can comment comment on this if uh, they want uh... Uh, is yeah, Kumari, the question of Kumari. Can, Kumari, you okay. Kumari, can we publish a paper when the method of, or the technique used in this is, is old, but the problem we explore is new? Uh, yeah, actually, yes, uh, because if I uh, just, just a very simple example if I use the HFSS, which is there, of course, using finite element method. For designing a new filter, but the filter is new and I'm demonstrating something new, of course, I can publish. Therefore, if I develop something and then I use this tool for uh, uh, another, uh, in another domain, of course, you can publish. I did it in the past. I, uh, I, I was used to develop numerical techniques and we developed a certain technique. We proved it in, let's say, analysis of a guide. Uh, circuit and then we use the same technique with some changes of course with some development for analyzing uh, uh, dichroic mirrors and I published another paper because it was of course developed with some changes but in particular it was dedicated to another structure and therefore it's uh, absolutely appropriate in my opinion to publish this in this way of course if you reuse the same with no changes at all, and you just analyze another structure, maybe it is too, uh, let's say, uh, too similar. But, uh, and this is uh, where the uh, editor and associate will come into play. They can somehow decide if uh, it is enough or not in terms of novelty. This is uh, also very subjective from the editor point of view. Depends on the editor, we say. Shirif uh, give update about his question about uh, was, open, why people yeah. publish there. Actually, uh, that's that's. Uh, I believe it's because they want to be recognized as the first author of a paper. There is also another reason that the paper published in archive uh, are uh, come more much before than the paper published in the journal. Therefore, you start collecting. Uh, citations in archive, which are not counting, but people know your paper. Therefore, when they publish, when the paper is published, if you give the information of the publication, they can reference the appropriate paper. And therefore you get typically more citation uh, in, in, the, in the initial uh, years of the publication, which is in general, not maybe not so common. Therefore, I believe this is the, but also this is a style because the, the physical people, they publish always in archive. Before, when they do something, they publish in archive and then they submit to a journal. Therefore, it's even a, a matter of attitude and uh, let's say the habit you have. It's not so common in our community because uh, I don't see so many, I didn't saw at least because uh, now I finish it, but uh, so many paper pre-published in archive. But then I had one case, the first case I, I went to IEEP asking, is it uh, feasible or not? And they explained to me that uh, it is feasible and therefore this is not breaking any, any rule and it is uh, feasible, you can do it. Uh, this is a very nice point about the, the Marufi point. Uh, actually, the associate editor can do 
what you want or she wants, but my suggestion as editor in chief was always don't include new reviewers at the second step because obviously the auto replay to the, the initial reviewers. And if someone jump in and writes other question, maybe the question are worth, but then it is a, it become an enemy story because if every time you include a new reviewer, you always have new question. Therefore, my suggestion to the associator was try to invite more reviewers, eventually have four, five reviewers if you want to be more confident. But then if at the second step, you don't have to involve any new reviewer unless everybody refuses and you don't feel, uh, let's say, comfortable enough to decide yourself the paper. Also keep in mind that uh, in general, the second round, uh, at least uh, we try to force the associate editor to decide to, to issue the recommendation without the reviewer. In case of major or minor, we, we try to force them because we said, okay, you have the question, you have the answer, you are an expert, you can decide if the answer is properly, sorry, if the question is properly answered or, or, or not. Therefore, in most cases, there was no second, let's say full second round. The second round was just limited to the associate editor and the editor in chief. And we together decided if the paper was acceptable or not. Only in case where the associate is not confident because maybe the topic is a bit uh, strange topic or these kind of things, uh, uh, the paper was sent to the reviewer again. But in general, we try to limit uh, the, uh, the, the second step to the associate editor and editor in chief. Question of Ahmed. What is the corresponding author? That has done most, no. Corresponding author is just the people that uh, is the interface with the editor and IEEE, nothing more. It can be the more typically, actually it may be the, 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 the student itself, uh, but it can be the supervisor, it can be any of the author. The important thing is that uh, the IEEE website is organized in a way that uh, all the, uh, the correspondence is sent to one people. And the, the corresponding author is responsible to share with the other authors the information, okay? And collect all the, uh, the replay, modify the paper and submit again. Therefore, this is the role of the corresponding author. Actually, uh, I think that there is another uh, figure in IEEE, which is the principal author or the something similar. I don't remember the name is something like the principal author that you can indicate not necessarily coincident with the corresponding one. It is reported in the footnote, and this may be useful for you because in some, uh, let's say, competition, you need to show that you were one of the key people within this paper. In that case, it is possible to write somewhere that you were the principal, uh, let's say, researcher in this work. I don't remember exactly the name, but there is a name which is not corresponding, but is something like principal, uh, research or something similar. And this is uh, maybe useful. And this is uh, what uh, he was saying, the people who did the largest part of, part of the world. Uh, actually, I have a, co a comment about this. What does it mean larger past part of the world? Because one people may have spent, let's say six months in the lab, but the other one may have had the clever idea ever had in the world. What is more important? Personally, I believe the idea, not the six months in the lab. Of course, the, the, the time in the, spent in the lab is very, very important to confirm the idea, to show that it works. But the idea itself is what is really relevant, okay? You will never work the, the Nobel, win the Nobel Prize because you spent a lot of time in the lab. You win the Nobel Prize because you have a clever idea and everybody recognizes that this is your idea in general. And this is come back to the previous question about the uh, the head of the lab that uh, put the name in the in the in the in the paper. If he somehow leverages the idea, probably it is worth having the name as an author. Uh, look at this question before this one about the article analysis from Ahmed. Uh, 
uh, in the most case, the theory was already developed in the past. So how I can improve the, my theory without repeating or producing the same analysis? Uh, just before the uh, Ahmed Moulay, 1123. Uh, they are not numbered in my list, I'm sorry. Oh, it's okay. Uh, ah, he sent it to me, sorry. I, yeah, that's why. Uh, and the question is, uh, uh, my question is about theoretical analysis. In most cases, most yes, uh, definitively, the theory was already developed in the past. So how I can improve my theory without repeating or producing uh, the same analysis? Actually, it, it, no, the analysis can be the same. You can actually, in some cases, it, it is quite and, normal. I published a paper where in, in 2019, I published one paper when we showed the analysis of a rectangular red guide. Why? Because we developed, uh, actually it was not the only example, but it was <laughs> the basic example. Uh, Why? Well, we developed a measureless method and we wanted to prove the accuracy compared to analytical results. Therefore, rectangular web guide is perfectly known. Everybody understands what it is. And therefore, we demonstrated that the, the code is accurate in the analysis of this. And then, of course, we showed also other results. Therefore, you don't need uh, an example which is uh, extremely new, or it can be even just a very simple standard web guide just to show that. Uh, uh, your method is accurate, is fast, uh, compare very well with the with the result. Of course, you have to show ma more because if you if your uh, technique is able only to analyze the, the, the rectangular web guide, nobody will care and it will not be published. But this could be an example, and uh, nobody will uh, uh, will refuse this example because it's a standard example, very simple but very well known, and you can perfectly compare with the, with your results. Uh, we have time for a few other questions. Yes, some minutes. Great, uh, <laughs> okay. okay. thank you. They just gone. Is uh, Hatef Shiran? Yeah. Relevant. I know. Uh, you already answered the this. Yeah. Part of your responding, uh, the references. Uh, yeah. No, actually, you don't have to reference what whatever you read. You have to reference what is relevant for your paper. Actually, in the introduction, you say this is the problem as it has been addressed. In the past, here and there, and you give references because you read the paper, you saw the same problem addressed in other journal, in other paper. Then you say this uh, solution, uh, th there is still this open problem because maybe it's written somewhere that this is an open problem. Then other people suggested to start from this uh, theory and you reference something and so on. You need actually the references come. Uh, let's say naturally when you write the paper because you say okay here I made a statement a statement either there is a demonstration or there is a reference in your paper no way yeah so when you make a statement you have to put a reference that uh, let's say uh, validate your statement or you have to prove the statement this is let's say the way we proceed and therefore this is quite natural to select probably a subset of the paper you read not all the papers Okay, this is actually, there is the question of uh, Sphere, which is somehow related to the previous question about the publishing incomplete results. And this is the, 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 the other face of the, of the coin, because of course, if people publish uh, incomplete data, you will never be able to, re to reproduce exactly the same result. Therefore, this is the reason why editors tend to refuse paper with uh, incomplete data. Although sometimes you have to manage to the, with the fact that there are involved companies and they don't want to deliver everything. Therefore, uh, it's a critical question, not easy to answer because, uh, of course, it happened. Uh, I myself, I had the experience of uh, paper that were uh, not complete or even the results were not corresponding to the data. And this is another point because in some cases, companies publish data which are a bit different from the real ones. And this is to try to, let's say, make uh, some uh, mix up and avoid uh, reusing exactly the same uh, structure. I'm sorry, but uh, the editor do their best to try to get, uh, let's say, uh, 
the, the, the process uh, uh, as much as possible coherent, but in some cases, something is published which is not uh, as it should be. This is uh, one problem. And this is one of the reasons why some papers are not uh, cited, because if you publish something which is incomplete, the other people will not reference your paper because it is not useful for them. This is uh, another way to see the same problem. I'm reading another another comment here. Yeah. It's not enough, only one to paper, then how to compare results and how to make good discussion. Here is published data for some specific is not enough, only one to paper. Ah, okay, come on. If there are only one to paper, it means that you are doing something on a very, very hot topic, which is nice for you because it means that the topic is completely new because nobody published it or just few published on it. And therefore you have to try to reproduce what has been done before and show something new. And this is, uh, of course, some, some of your results can also be without validation. Because when I say to you, I validated my method with the rectangular guide, and then I showed other results that went beyond the, the, uh, the rectangular guide. In that case, the new result can be even without validation. You don't need to validate all the results that you present. You need to, to validate your idea. And therefore, even just one result, which is compared successfully with another, is a validation. And then you propose something more. Okay, this is the, 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 the idea, especially for new topics, because of, obviously, actually, if you can compare all your results, it means that your results are not new, because uh, someone else did the same previously. And therefore, they are not completely new. This is, uh, uh, let's say, the, the, the reason of my answer. Okay, uh, I think I'm sorry, but I think uh, yeah. we have to leave. Uh, I, yeah. Here there is a question about the, the cover letter. I can answer this. Actually, I didn't give too much importance to the cover letter because the cover letter is typically, and when myself I submit a cover letter, which is like this Dear editor, I'm submitting this paper authored by for a possible publication in your journal. That's it. Because actually, the paper itself. Uh, uh, talk uh, instead of the cover letter, unless you want to highlight some problem, like or some question, like uh, this is a resubmission of a previous paper. In that case, of course, it is important to write it in the cover letter. But in general, it is not so uh, important the cover letter, in my opinion. But this is maybe a personal opinion, and uh, because I was never polarized by the cover letter. Uh, and honestly speaking, I was not even polarized by the author list because try, I try to, to uh, let's say, pro process any paper in the same way, independently on the author list. Even if there are a list of fellow in the paper and a list of perfectly unknown people, for me, they were exactly two identical papers. And then, of course, at the end of the day, it's a matter of having the comments of the reviewer for deciding what to do with the paper. And honestly speaking, I reject the paper from everyone. And uh, I think that uh, uh, everyone can say I got a paper rejected by Luca. And uh, of course, likely I got a paper accepted by Luca, maybe more than one. <laughs> That, uh, thanks, uh, thanks, Luca. I receive a lot of messages thanking you and highlighting uh, the quality Last and comment. the benefit of this presentation. Last comment, uh, yeah. uh, Derek. If you want, I already send the, the, the slide to uh, K, but I can send to you. That's if perfect. I will share it. If the, the slide, you can post them, deliver, no problem. Because That's great. They, I, yes. I receive a lot of messages like this. And as I say, probably I will contact you soon, maybe to make another presentation in Canada, Region anyway, 7, yeah. uh, two or three chapters together. I will send to you the slide and please feel free to distribute to the to the student or post in a, in a website, no problem. Th thanks, uh, th thank you a lot. We are uh, we are grateful uh, for this presentation, amazing presentation. Thanks again, Luca. Okay. Thanks for your for the audience also. See you next time, possibly in person. <laughs> yeah, hopefully, hopefully soon. Okay. Hopefully, bye thank bye. you. Bye. Thanks all. Thanks all. Good. Uh, well, thank you very much, Luca. Bye -bye. Well, okay. Bye. Bye. For your, you know, the uh, inspiring talk. I'm sure that everybody has enjoyed your 
your parents. Oh, definitively yes. Yeah. Uh, the uh, and also it's important for for our students to learn from the let's say the not only just expert but also the person who has been handling those uh, those, those papers. Uh, that's pretty important because the authors have the one point of view, but the editor in chief has another point of view sometimes. So that's why it's important for our students to see that how can how how they can develop uh, uh, you know the high quality papers to get accepted and also how to uh, develop the strategy to fight the reviews okay basically that's the case and uh, so i hope that the people learn this from from the lucas presentations and also the discussion here and i'm sure that the everybody has uh, you know they learn uh, you know the different uh, things from the uh, the presentation. I'm sure that the people can develop better strategy for the paper. Uh, the you know the uh, write up. Okay. Thank you very much, Luca, yeah. and uh, I, I I really appreciate very much your your your, your presentation during this uh, particular time. Otherwise, I get you to Montreal here to have a nice uh, uh, you know the meal and a dinner. You know, and of course, we'll do that. Uh, later <laughs> we'll on. do that. Sure. <laughs> yeah. Hey. As yeah, soon as we you. can travel, I will do it. <laughs> yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. Thank I'll get you. Okay. Okay. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye. Thanks. Uh, bye. Thanks. Okay. Thanks, everyone. Bye.